Today we are going to talk about acute mastoiditis. This is the whole human skull and this is temporal bone. Temporal bone contains several parts in which this is zygomatic process, tympanic, styloid process, petromastoid and squamous. So today we are going to focus on mastoid part. So what is mastoiditis? It is the inflammation of mucosal lining of antrum and mastoid air cell systems. The term mastoiditis is used when infection spread from the mucosa lining the mastoid air cells to involve bony walls of mastoid air cell systems. Moving toward its etiology, acute mastoiditis it is most commonly caused by acute superiority otitis media. That is, it follows acute superiority otitis media. The determining factors may be high virulence of organism or there may be chances of low resistance of patient due to any diseases like measles or there may be poor nutrition or associated systematic diseases such as diabetes. And the most common causative organism for acute mastoiditis is beta hemolytic streptococcus. So what are the pathological process are responsible for formation of acute mastoiditis? Basically, this infection start progressing and it progresses toward mucoporosteal lining of air cell systems. Increases the amount of pus and production due to large surface area is involved. And what? This infection start producing large amount of pus. This pus is drained from tympanic membrane or eustachian tube and the another one is hyperemic decalcification and osteoclastic reabsorption of bony walls. Both these processes combine to cause destruction and coalescence of mastoid ear cells converting them into a single irregular cavity filled with pus that is impima of mastoid. So what are the clinical features? Clinical features are very simple. First, we are going through its symptoms and symptoms are similar to that of acute superiority otitis media. There is a pain behind the ear because of accumulation of pus. Ear discharge. Any persistence ear discharge beyond 3 weeks in case of acute otitis media is directly points toward mastoiditis. So what are the signs? The first one is mastoid tenderness. This is an important sign. It is elicited by pressure over the middle of mastoid process at its steep posterior border or root of zygoma. Keep in mind that when we are going to check mastoid tenderness, tenderness should always be compared with that of healthy side. The other signs are ear discharge which may be mucopurulent or purulent and there is a lighthouse effect can be seen. Perforation of tympanic membrane. The perforation of tympanic membrane is sometimes appear as a nipple like protrusion. Tympanic membrane is usually intact but dull and opaque. We can see the swelling over the mastoid. Initially there is an edema of periosteum but after some time there is a smooth iron out feel over the mastoid. There is always conductive type of hearing loss is present. So, what are the investigations we have to do for acute mastoiditis? The blood count shows polymorphonuclear leukocytosis and erythrocyte sedimentation rate is usually raised. If you find X-ray of mastoid or CT scan of temporal bone, we can see that there is a clouding of air cells. So, what are the causes for clouding of the air cells. It is due to collection of exudate in them and the bony partition between these air cells is become indistinct. Now moving toward its treatment, what do you think? Yes, first we have to hospitalize the patient and then we can start with antibiotics. In the absence of culture and sensitivity, 
we can start with amoxicillin or ampicillin then there we can do meningotomy early cases of acute mastoiditis respond to conservative treatment with antibiotics alone or combined with meningotomy if it is not solved then we can move towards cortical mastoidectomy and it is indicated when there is subperiosteal abscesses mastoid leading to complications like facial paralysis labyrinthitis intracranial complications and there is a positive reservoir sign that is meatus immediately fills with pus after it has been mopped off so these all are the indications for cortical mastoidectomy now what are the complications of acute mastoiditis so complications are generally occur in which part which are attached to mastoid bone so there may be facial paralysis there may be petrocytis extradural or subdural abscesses there may be meningitis brain abscesses beside that there is a lateral sinus so there may be lateral sinus thrombofibrillitis and there may be chances of subperiosteal abscesses if you don't remember this all complications here we have a simple mnemonic that is less fb fb means facebook so less fb l for lateral sinus thrombofibrillitis or labyrinthitis e for extradural abscesses s for subdural abscesses or subperiosteal abscesses f for facial paralysis and b for brain abscesses so this is all about complications of acute mastoiditis and here we cover all important points for your competitive exams if you have any doubt then you can hit comment in comment section thank you